This is Dr. Austin Fragman. I'm pleased to present to you femur lengthening with a retrograde entry precise nail. This patient has a distal femoral varus and shortening deformity. The radiographs of the actual patient are on the left side. The red lines denote the proposed path of the IM nail. The intersection of these lines is the osteotomy site. After deformity correction, the red lines will be collinear. The inset magnification on the right side shows blocking screw position. Blocking screws are very important for deformity correction and maintaining the alignment during lengthening. Let's take a closer look at how to do this technique. First, the blocking screws are placed. They're placed in the concavity of the deformity at the exact location as the planning denotes. Screws are pre-drilled, measured, and inserted in a standard technique. Next, the rotational markers or external fixator can be applied. Typically five or six millimeter half pins are used for this. The distal half pin needs to be drilled posterior to the path of the IM nail. The proximal pin can be in the middle of the canal provided it's proximal to the nail. The pins are inserted by hand. This magnification shows that the pin is posterior to the path of the nail. The knee is then flexed and the entry point is found. A rigid reamer can be inserted just lateral to the blocking screws to start the path of the nail. The osteotomy is then performed. Multiple drill holes are created in one plane through a small incision. This is the classic corticotomy technique. These also serve as vent holes and allow for the accumulation of the reamings, which helps in the healing process. An external fixator can then be applied at this point. The external fixator gives a lot of stability to the bone fragments. This helps after osteotomy. The corticotomy or osteotomy is then completed in a standard fashion with an osteotome. The deformity of varus can then be corrected. This can then be locked into place with the external fixator. This gives great stability during reaming. A ball tip guide wire is then inserted in the path that was already pre-reamed and then down past the osteotomy site. Sequential reaming is performed with flexible reamers in a standard fashion. We recommend reaming two millimeters over the diameter of the precise nail. The nail is then inserted Distal locking is then performed using the included targeting device. After locking distally, the rotation should be checked once again and held in the desired position. Then proximal locking can be done using perfect circle technique and fluoroscopy. Note that the nail passes just lateral to the blocking screws locking this into the desired alignment. Postoperatively, the patient starts the lengthening process four days after surgery. The lengthening is performed at 0.33 millimeters three times per day. This gives approximately one millimeter of length per day. Therefore, after 10 days of distraction, roughly 10 millimeters is achieved. In this case, we wanted 30 millimeters of length, so it took approximately 30 days to achieve that length. The patient is followed every 10 to 14 days postoperatively with x-rays to ensure that we have achieved the length we want. We then enter the consolidation phase once lengthening has stopped. In this phase, the bone mineralizes and becomes very hard. Weight bearing progresses according to the x-ray mineralization. The implants need to be removed. This can be done anywhere from six to 12 months after the original surgery. Implant removal is faster and a much quicker recovery for the patient. This concludes our video. Thanks so much for joining.